guess who's back? That's right, I'm back with another video. And what, it only took like, like, um, 11 months. Damn, that's a lot of time. So where have I been? Finishing my degree in software engineering. And I think I passed, but they haven't actually gave you my marks yet. So I'll probably find out next year. <laughs> Right, so you might be wondering what I got in plan. Alright, well, I might have got a little bit carried away. We got out of the box of mysteries! Oh. Right, so, I'm sure you're wondering what's in the box, Henry? Why does it have flap? Hmm. Well, you see, this, this is gonna be our AC unit. Oh. Heat shrink, wiring. You can never have too much wiring, I mean like... It's got some green... It's got some blue... Got some... That's not wire, but you know, it's something. You got some zip ties, you know, you can never have too many of those. These are, it's practically the duct tape of engineering. Got some more... Cable... I don't actually know what that's for. I've completely forgotten. We got a thing... It's red... Very nice. Some screws. A box. It's a blue thing. Watch out. We got some more zip ties. <laughs> I don't think I was supposed to buy those. <laughs> the, some a board of material. A cage basket thing. Another cage basket thing. One fan. So anyway, let's start off with this guy, okay? Now this guy is the reason this is all happening. So originally I was looking for some fans on Trade Me, which is like the Craigslist for New Zealand. Now uh, I saw this little guy, right? This little doohickey. Uh, and I thought, wow, that's not something I thought I'd come across. Um, and then I looked these guys up and I'm like, wow, they're usually a little more expensive uh, than your typical fan. Why is this so cheap? Anyway, so I bought it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, now we now we have a good old extractor fan, which we're going to use to extract from the hot air into a container, which isn't exactly its job, but, you know, we're going to do it. Oh, yeah. The plan is to force air through the metal cages, transferring heat between the air and frozen ice packs, which should result in colder air coming out. For this project, we will be using an Arduino Nano to automate the fan, which can be done using a relay and temperature sensors. Additionally, I'll be using a simple LCD display to show information. I started prototyping the device, and everything was going smoothly. Up until I plugged it in and tried to compile some simple code. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, what happened? So it turns out that the Arduino Nanos I had were Chinese clones and actually needed different drivers to connect to that Arduino does not supply. So I had to go find those. Okay. <laughs> okay. Win Windows 10. Yes, that's the one I want. Oh, <laughs> well, that looks nice. Select driver. Install. Ah, uh, come on. <laughs> I saw it blink on the, on one of the receiving pins. It's further than we've ever gotten. Maybe try old bootloader. Come on. Oh. <gasps> Oh! Oh! Oh, we got it! <laughs> so after Henry completed his quest to obtain the obscure Chinese drivers, he could now continue building his prototype. Alright, so we're gonna test the relay now. Currently the target temperature is set to 100 degrees. So if we just quickly set it to 10, you should see this turned on and then the relay turn on. 
Hey, there we go. Now that I had a working prototype, I needed to strip the mains cable to expose the positive wire. Although that turned out to be easier said than done, because I had no idea what I was doing. Do not try about to see at home. There we go. Split open. Right, I'm no electrician, but I think that's pretty good. Like, <laughs> I don't strip wires very often, but I, I think it's a pretty good job. There's no cuts in these little cords. It's just all the way straight to the white bit. And then everything else is fine. There's not even a scrape along these. You know, never mind all these failures here. We, I tried to cut it and I kept scraping the cable relay. Eh, remember that guy? Alright, so he's going to take these positive lines and then the Arduino can control it through 5 volt input here. Right, so now you meet me here at midnight. As you can see, my midnight magic is uh, going strong. So I thought, oh, I don't want to get my fingers burning, so giant heat sink, other heat sink, broken, broken hardware for my computer, but Damn, they're great for dispersing heat. Got our, our cable we're going to use later in the machine, so just tie, it, put that away so it doesn't annoy us. Then we got these 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 guys. Hey, they're way too long because you know this this section needs to go into a box. These don't. We just have to keep kind of going straight. Let's see how much extra wire we have for that. So um, this is the part of the video where I tell you I don't actually know how to solder very well. Okay, so the solder started smoking. Um, it doesn't smell like solder though, it smells like dishwashing liquid because I'm using the dish soap. I'd say I did a pretty good job there. Wow. that I actually did it. <laughs> it actually doesn't look too bad right so after some thinking I've come up with this layout so over here we have our relay which is going to turn our power on and off this is like a display just to tell me some information so I'll have to cut out a hole for that this is the nano so the nano will talk to the relay to turn the fan on and off as well as that it'll talk to the display to display things and there's going to be a hole here for temperature sensors to be plugged into here as well as a hole here for the USB and a hole on this side for the mains. So now that I had a plan, I got to measuring and marking all the modifications that I needed to do. Afterwards, I cut, drilled and sanded down my work until I had built the enclosure I needed. Alright guys, so I'm back with the box. now. Don't laugh, alright? Okay, it's, it's the first time I've used any of my tools, alright? So it's gonna be a little bit rough, alright? It's a bit nervous, alright? Here it comes, here it comes. Remember, be nice, be nice. Yeah, alright, okay, look, I know, I know I missed it a little bit here. I might have overdone it, alright? So we're just going to ignore all of this. Alright, and the wonderfully cut hole. Right. Now, I might have just noticed a slight issue with this design. See, I was making this all with, you know, the intention that this was all going to fit nicely. And so far it is like that, but if you might have noticed, the holes have moved up slightly. You know, these are on my rubber grommets are just fine, but this, um, this USB here is a uh, kind of, mmm, that's an angle, that's a nice healthy angle, and so the board has to be here, right, and then it kind of has to go like, wow, that's not going to work, I'm going to I'm gonna have to draw this again, aren't I, I'll do that later, <laughs> it's a bit late now. 
Alright, well, let's get started. Next up, I had to solder all the components together into one unit. To say this was challenging is an understatement. My hand was shaking so much doing this, because I was scared that my inexperience with soldering would cause me to break something, or solder two joints together that I wouldn't be able to fix. The last wire. My fingers are really, really hot. Oh my god, we got it. We got it. <sighs> oh, my god. oh my god, that was stressful. But it went really smoothly, aside from a few digital pins on the Arduino that I may have accidentally covered up and I burnt one of the rings off the prototype board completely off uh but besides those parts it went very well and before i knew it i had soldered everything together now we're just going to mount these on now the original plan was to um use screws for these little screw holes i made uh so I, I don't have screws but i do have zip ties oh yeah we're gonna jank it up even more So we're back. First off, I've hooked up all of the cables through the grommet, which was a very tight fit. Uh, thought I might have to drill another hole, but we made it. So we've got all of the cables for the temperature sensors. Now inside is where most of the changes have actually occurred. So we've got the main power coming in here. We've got the ground coming out into three different wires because I didn't think this through very well. Uh, so two of these are for the display so we can turn the display on and off and then this one goes to the Arduino to tell it when I've told it to turn on or off which should override any sort of temperature controls. Uh, you might be also wondering why the pins are bent so far out of shape. Well, I guess see Henry didn't think this design very well through and when you close the lid that switch goes right on top of here, on top of the relay. Yeah, I couldn't close the lid anymore because the the pins hit the relay. So I had to had to get um, good old messed up pliers, bite bite, um, to go rebend all this, so I could actually close the lid. More or less, there's still like problems with the cables being in the way, but yeah, I think we're actually really close now to getting finished. And something just occurred to me: we haven't actually checked if everything's working. I mean, we've done all this. We've we've basically like ninety five percent of the way there, and I haven't plugged in the power once. Right. So um, let's try our first power test. So we should just see some lights come on, maybe even a click. Oh, okay. Is the screen on? The screen is on, and if I... Ah, uh, yeah. Look at that. It's still kind of on, and I'm not sure why that's happening, because I switched it all onto this, but we'll just... No, oh, that's good enough. <laughs> it's, it's basically like an auto-dimmer. Alright, so kind of funny story. Uh, I've lost that screw. If I find it, I'll put it back in, but for now, we're just going to continue with three screws. These come with a handy little connector for all these little pins, so what I'm actually going to do is just strip these cables and just connect them to there. Alrighty, so now we get to the practical problem. So you see, we got we got a fan here. Now, there's nothing wrong with the fan. The fan works well, right? Um, the problem is, I ordered ducting, right, that, that fits the fan. There's 150 millimeter diameter, 30 meters long ducting. I ordered that beginning of this month because I was like, okay, we'll make this this video, you know, soonish. <laughs> anyway, so I just kept waiting, delaying the video, waiting on this ducting, and then and then I was like, hey, where's my where's my tubes? And they're like, yo, yo, that's that's a cool thing, right? So the tubes, here's a tracking number. 
It doesn't exist. The tracking number doesn't exist. You can't use it on the website. But we, we, we shipped it. We, just, you know, we shipped it. So just don't need to worry about it. I'm like, all right, okay. It's cool. It's just, you know, the whole project's kind of waiting on this one part. So anyway, we're still waiting on that part. Um, but... You know, I, when I bought the when I bought the, the the big fan, it came with some ducting. It's not 30 meters long, but you know we'll use it. And it, you know, it's not the best quality. It's just a bit of ripped here and a bit broken here. But you know, hey, we use it. We'll figure it out. You know. So I've been doing a little bit of the maths, right? So we, so when I bought this, I knew that it did. 394 cubic meters per hour of air shifting right so I don't know what that means so I, I converted that to seconds so I learned that this does 0 0.109 cubic meters per second of air that it pushes and I'm just like thinking oh that's not a lot so maybe maybe I might have bought a too big of a chiller so um, I, I found out the equation to convert cubic meters to liters and it turns out one cubic meter is actually a thousand liters. So that means we are pushing 109.4 liters per second. Per second, right? 109 liters. Um, so the chiller we have is actually um, uh, 50 liters fan. We are going to be pushing two of all the air in the, that chiller per second. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, it's going to take a while to push the air two, two times per second. That's pr I think that's pretty good. You know? I think, I think I might have actually got a good deal on this thing. <laughs> Look, buddy. I'm a software engineer. That means I solve problems. Not practical problems like how do I fix this tube onto the thing? All right, I wasn't trained for this. This this is not what we were taught. I was taught how to make variables and classes, not how to put a tube onto another tube. This is like plumbing school. <laughs> right, I think I've done the thing. Now how do I keep it detached? We I said this is like plumbing school, so we get this plumber's tape, I guess. Wait, I put the tube on the wrong end of the pipe. <laughs> I never said I was good at solving practical problems, alright? Right, so excuse the mess, but you know, we are in the middle of building, so it does get a bit messy when I do that. Right, so we're just gonna test this to there and hope that these flaps come out. Alright, we got airflow, boys. Check out what happens if I close the, um, check out what happens if I close the slots on the other side. <laughs> right, so, apparently last night I built all of this, because this is what I woke up to. A giant tube above my rubbish bin, a bunch of cable just zip tied together, zip ties all along here, zip ties on the, the tubing, Keeping the wires in place. There's hot glue on the fan. There's there's hot glue keeping pieces of wire together. There was an attempt to use heat shrink, and then hot glue. Like oh my god, there's a lot of uh, a lot of corners cut last night apparently, uh, but it looks like everything's wired. So I guess the the only thing left is to program it through the little hole. Oh. Okay, that's um... Yep, that's something on the screen. It was at this um... point that I realized there was a problem. I spent about an hour trying to fix the screen and then decided that we were just gonna move on. Let's see, if I flick this on? Everything should turn on and not explode. Oh, 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 it works. Oh, and there's, there's cool air coming out. Oh my god. <laughs> All 
Alright, so let's explain what we're actually looking at here. So this is the AC controller. Uh, we can see a bunch of information here. We've got some uh, some ones like here, the override for if the fan's going to be able to turn on or not. This is just to turn it off. Uh, the target temperature for the room. The room temperature currently and the outgoing air temperature from the container and then which sensor we're using for the target and how far below the target we want to go before we turn off the fan cool and then this button turns it off uh, this one just resyncs up here there we go uh, here we can set a new temperature target, so let's say I want to do 50 degrees in the room. So you press set. Give it a second, and there you go. Now it's set to that. And the fan's also stopped. <laughs> let's go back to 21. And the fan's turned itself back on. So this threshold target will change how far below the target temperature we want to be until the fan turns off and this button will change which sensor we look at for the temperature so right now it's just cooling my feet down um, so we're just gonna give it a few hours and see how it feels after it all right we'll be going for two and a half hours now my feet feel really nice and cool and the temperature of the room is... Ba -ba -da -bum. Wow, it got hotter! It's... It's not working very well. While it might not cool down the room very well, if you're like, lying in front of it, it works alright. Yeah. So sadly, it seems that this has been a failure. Right, so after some thought, I've come up with a theory on why it's not working. Um, so I'm using ice packs to keep the cages cool. So I can conduct um, the heat from the air into the, into the ice packs. But by doing so, I'm defrosting the ice packs. So they're not staying cool anymore. And I thought it'll, it would be able to resist that for a bit and, you know, cool the room down. But I'm wrong, obviously. So <laughs> uh, to improve this, you probably need to get a compressor. If I did that, then at least it would stay cool and wouldn't defrost immediately. And that would actually help it quite a bit. But I don't have that budget right now, so <laughs> we're just going to have to settle for this. It kind of works, but not really. Um, if I if I do come back to it, I will. With a compressor. Alright, so before I head off, I'm just going to thank everyone that's been with the channel so far. Uh, I know I've been gone for 11 months, like uh, I should at the beginning. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not great at uploading, <laughs> so it's kind of cool that you guys are sticking around, to be honest. Thank you for that. And, uh, Merry Christmas. I think this is coming around around Christmas time. Yeah. So, yeah, enjoy your holidays, and, uh, hopefully I'll make another video this year. Or the beginning of next year. I do have one in the works at the moment. Alright, so I'm just going to leave you with some nice, uh, panning shots of, uh, the monstrosity I just built. <laughs>